now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Bride of Dragon. The Goddess Next Door and John Haynes team up to take on the dark vampire in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Bride of Dracula in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers today. Last weekend, Proud Mary bombed at the box office. And with the box office failure of Proud Mary, many studio executives are scratching their heads wondering why this movie failed. And some in the black community are decrying racism as related to the marketing of Proud Mary. However, as a guy who has been in the entertainment industry for over 25 years and understands the entertainment industry, I can tell you that marketing had nothing to do with the failure of Proud Mary. When you take a more critical look at the film, it was the concept that caused this film to fail to gain an audience, and it was the concept that had serious problems from minute one. Now, Proud Mary was originally designed to be one of these strong woman films like Atomic Blonde and like Wonder Woman. It was designed to have one of these strong, powerful heroines who could do everything that a man could do. Now, many feminists and SJWs like to see this type of strong and powerful woman. Unfortunately, they don't usually spend money on movie tickets for these kind of films. Usually who spends the most money on these kind of films are black men. And when black men started looking at the trailer for Proud Mary, they quickly got turned off by the appearance of Taraji P. Henson in this film. And the appearance of Taraji P. Henson in this film was very masculine. She acted very masculine. And because she acted extremely masculine, that is what turned off most of the core audience of black men. Now, when it comes down to the black audience, especially black men, when they see a black woman, they want to see a very attractive, slender, sexy woman. And they want to see this attractive, slender, sexy woman being feminine. Taraji P. Henson was acting extremely masculine. In the opening scenes of the trailer, we see her doing push-ups like a man. After she gets out of the shower, she's putting on her clothes just like a man. She's putting on the gloves and clenching her fists, and then she goes into the arsenal for all the guns, and it's a complete turnoff for a guy to see a woman acting just like he would, and then doing things like he would. And it was further emasculating for many men to see this Taraji P. Henson going out here shooting up men and beating up men. And that was a complete turnoff for most of those guys. Now, with the marketing of Proud Mary, they were trying to make it sort of like black exploitation, sort of like Pam Greer and Coffee and Foxy Brown. But what they didn't understand was that in Coffee and Foxy Brown, they often marketed towards Pam Greer's softness, Pam Greer's sex appeal, and they often focused on things like romance as her being involved with some handsome, attractive black man, and they pushed a black-on-black -black love angle in many of Pam Greer's films. So they missed out on a lot of the substance as related to the black exploitation um, stories that Pam Greer used to star in. I mean, I remember the later films that she starred in, like Sheba Baby and Friday Foster, they really amped up on her femininity and really played hard on her femininity, trying to show how sexy and attractive she was because they knew that the core audience for most of Pam Greer's films were men. And making sure that you can stimulate men is core to selling your franchise if you have a female involved in it because your core audience for stories that feature a heroine is going to be primarily men. I know this for a fact because when I go out here and I do things like this E-Steam series that I'm working on, most of my core audience for the E-Steam series is primarily men. And they wanted to see this devilish diva, this incredibly sexy devilish diva who I modeled after actress Sally Richardson Whitfield. And that's what they want to see. They want to see somebody who is some sort of sexual fantasy. And yes, you can put substance in that kind of story, and I do that all the time. But with the makers of Proud Mary, they were looking to push their SJW agenda. She was going to be this strong, powerful, masculine acting female. And again, masculine acting women turn most men off. When men see a woman acting like him, it's just, it does, it's not sexually attractive and you're not going to get him to spend money on this. 
Now, whenever a black man wants to go out and see a movie, he wants to see a very attractive woman, he wants to see a soft woman, he wants to see a sexy woman. And we didn't see that with Taraji P. Henson and the way she was presented. I mean, in most of the frames, she's looking manly. When men think of attractive women, they're thinking of Kimberly Elise, Jada Pinkett, Sally Richardson Whitfield, and many others like Lisa Bonet and Vanity back in the day in their prime. They're thinking about women like that, and they want to see those women looking good. They want to see those women looking pretty. They want to see those women being extremely attractive. That's what's going to give them an incentive to go out here and spend money at the box office on this kind of film. The studio executives, they just didn't understand that as related to Proud Mary. They thought they were going to bring in the Wonder Woman crowd, the feminists, and the SJWs. No, those people usually get all their movies on BitTorrent. And this is something studio executives don't understand because your SJW doesn't want to pay for anything. Your feminist doesn't want to pay for anything. They are usually at home. These are not the people who go to the theater. The people who go to the theater, mostly men, they want to see this type of movie, and they would have wanted to see this type of movie had they market, had they um, cast the right actress, had they played up on the sex appeal, and how they played up on the softness of a black woman, because that's what a lot of black men want to see at the movies. They want to see a very soft, feminine, sexy woman, and they want to see a story with a little bit of substance. You can put action and substance and all that in there, and it's, it's not that hard to do, but these studio executives wanted to try to see if they could get a fast dollar and try to do something in the strong woman model, like Wonder Woman, like Atomic Blonde, and not understand the formula for it, because... What made Wonder Woman successful was Patty Jenkins' direction and the fact that they toned down Wonder Woman a bit and made her more of a traditional woman and not a uber-feminist. Atomic Blonde, in contrast, played up the super-feminist, and that movie died at the box office. Now, the other reason why your Proud Mary failed to get an audience at the box office, in addition to this female being extremely masculine, was the derivative story. Now... Proud Mary's story is supposed to be about a hit woman who works for the mob and then she goes out here and kills some character's father and then the boy is, she, boy is found in the house where she kills him. And this story is extremely derivative of Luc Besson's film The Professional from 1994. Now if you take a look at the synopsis for Luc Besson's Professional and you put it side by side with Proud Mary... It literally is the exact same story. So why would anyone want to spend $15 to watch a rehash of a far superior film like Luc Besson's The Professional? Because Luc Besson's Professional was a well-crafted film. It was a story about a hitman having a relationship with the client of, of a next-door neighbor who was gunned down by a DEA agent. Um, his daughter was the only survivor of the massacre because she went out to the store. And it was about their relationship as he tries to teach her the skills to be an assassin and to get justice for the deaths of her family. Now, this Proud Mary looks like it wants to tell that type of story. Unfortunately, what they're trying to do is an extremely derivative story, and that's why the film falls completely apart. It looks like they're trying to fuse concepts together from a good film and black exploitation films, not understanding that those two models just don't work. I mean, people, when they go to the movies, they want a rock solid story with substance, they want a story with a plot, they want characters, they want action and adventure, they want all of this, and they want it in a solid original idea. And we didn't get an original idea with Proud Mary, we got derivative ideas, and we got imagery that alienated what should have been the core audience, because what the marketing department probably thought they would do was, oh, we'll market this to women, or we'll try to sell this to women, but again, women don't go to action movies. Men go to action movies, and this film did not give any man a reason to go to an action movie. When they saw Images of Taraji P. Henson with that blonde wig on her head and looking like one of these black women from the neighborhood who were trying to look like uh, a white woman. That, again, also turned them off because that these images in Proud Mary, they weren't turning a guy on. They were not stimulating his emotions. They were not giving him that reason to go out here 
and spend money. It looked like they were trying to create one of these franchises with this so-called strong, powerful woman, but they didn't understand what appealed to the core audience of men. Yes, men like to see female heroines, and female heroines do very well. I mean, look at the Underworld franchise, because the Underworld franchise with Kate Beckinsale gives viewers what they want. It gives them a soft, sexy woman. It has her fighting bad guys, but it gives us relationships, it gives us romance, it gives us action, it gives us adventure, and we didn't get any of that in Proud Mary. What we got in Proud Mary was a derivative story, an extremely unattractive looking Taraji P. Henson, and really bad cinematography and really bad direction, and an attempt to try to make a black female heroine, but no understanding of what makes a black female heroine appealing. You have to have that sex appeal in order to win over the core audience of males. You have to have a substantive story to bring the females in. And you have to have action and adventure that really has some romance in it and a little bit of humor in it. When I look at Proud Mary, there was no real humor in it. There was nothing there to break it all up. It was too serious. And these were some of the serious flaws as related to this film. And a lot of people think, oh, you can just mar you would have marketed this film, but it was nothing there that a marketing department could do. The concept was fundamentally flawed from minute one. It was extremely off from minute one, because if you're going to do this type of film, you have to understand the types of stories and story models as related to it, and you have to understand your core audience that you're selling to. Screen Gems, as I saw it, did not understand who to market this film to, and this is one of the reasons why they canceled many screenings and didn't let reviewers take a look at it, because they knew they had a deeply, fundamentally flawed project, they had a fundamentally flawed concept, and it was one that couldn't appeal to an African-American audience or a female audience, because the film's story had serious issues with it, and these issues really were what torpedoed this film at the box office. When I looked at the trailer for this film, I just saw all the problems were, that were wrong with it, and I saw where they went wrong with it, because when I saw that initial clip of that masculine acting Taraji P. Henson, I knew that there was a nail in the coffin for this movie, because, again, you cannot sell a heroine to females. What, what makes a heroine attractive is the core audience of males, and the secondary audience would be females, because once the males come in and see the character, then the females will come in because they see the guys liking this type of woman, and then they will try to be this type of woman or look for things that will make this themselves into this type of woman so that they can appeal to the men in their lives. And that's how you sell a concept featuring a strong heroine, and that's how you reach a larger audience that wants to see strong heroines. This is something I did with the E-Steam series and the E-Steam character. I started out looking primarily for that male audience, and that was one of the reasons why the, the character is so popular, and then later on branched out to the female audience, and that's what they should have done with this Proud Mary. Unfortunately, this Proud Mary tried too hard to appeal to the feminists and the SJWs, and they didn't understand that feminists and SJWs don't spend money at the box office. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try the eSteam series ebooks and paperbacks, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.